Let's talk about five ways to use your practice time correctly. Number one, structure your practice time. I go back and forth on this in terms of when I actually do it and when I don't. It just depends on my goals and how busy I am and that kind of thing. But when you're at home and you have plenty of time to do this, make sure that you actually pick and choose what your goals are. So write all this stuff out. What do I want to achieve? Maybe I want to alternate pick this lick at 180 BPM at 16th notes. Maybe I want to learn all of my seventh chords in every inversion. Maybe I want to be able to play 10 different jazz standards. Maybe I want to know all these metal songs or write all these metal songs, whatever it is, list your goals. Now structure your time based on what you need to do. Picking practice, legato practice, chord based practice, theory, ear training. Ear training of course will apply to pretty much every goal you're gonna have musically. So you should try to put that in every day. Break down your time, figure out how much time can I dedicate and I will for sure play every single day? Maybe that time is 30 minutes. Well, you can break that into three things for 10 minutes and use a timer. That'll help a lot. So 10 minutes of alternate picking practice, 10 minutes of legato, 10 minutes of ear training, 10 minutes of songwriting, 10 minutes of legato and alternate picking. Maybe you just split that into two sections, five minutes and then 10 minutes of theory, whatever it may be. You could do several hits of five minutes if you have a lot of goals. If you have an hour, you just extend all of these times. Number two, kind of already said this in number one, but write out your goals. Be honest with yourself. What do you want to accomplish? How are you going to get there? Break down these goals weekly, daily, monthly. How are you going to get to them? How are you going to, how are you going to achieve them? How much time are you going to dedicate? But structure those into realistic goals and timed goals. One thing a day for 10 minutes a day will equal an hour and 10 minutes a week. Not bad. Now, if you take that over 52 weeks in a year, now you've got 60.6 hours in a year. You can get pretty good at one thing in 60 hours. It's just about that consistency to achieve those goals that you've broken down. Number three, break down your goals into different days of the week. Maybe Monday, Wednesday, Friday is technique and ear training, and then maybe Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday is songwriting or studying theory, and then maybe Sunday is like a free jam day. Or you can group them Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday is technique, uh, Thursday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday is theory and songs or songwriting, cover songs, whatever it is, and then Sunday jam day or, or band practice, whatever you're doing at the time. That can also help you continue to move. If you can't fit in all of your goals every single day, because you know we have a lot of goals a lot of the time. We have big lofty musical goals that it's a lot to fit in in a single day, every single day. So divide it up, break those into structured sets during the week, but make sure not to leave anything out. If you have to miss a day, maybe you had to work this long, you know, 12, 14 hour shift at a very physical job and you just get home, you have a long commute home and you just don't have the time or energy to practice and so you go, okay, I have to miss today. Maybe you're sick. You know, when I'm sick, I don't really practice. Like if I'm dying sick, if I just have a cold, I do. But if I'm really sick, I'm not going to grab the guitar. So what you have to do is you have to be honest with yourself and make up that time later. Divide your next day in half. If you were going to do 30 minutes and three different goals for 10 minutes, we'll do six different goals, whatever you missed the day before and whatever you're doing that day, and do them for five minutes each. Or if you can, just double your practice time and get everything in for the regular amount of time. That, of course, is the, the better option, but if you can't spare that time, then divide everything up a little bit more. Number four. This can be a tough one for a lot of people, but really figure out how much time you can and will dedicate to playing. If you're having trouble staying motivated, I completely understand. I have other videos on ways to help with that, but this video is just about how to use your time. So the, one of the things you have to do is really ask yourself, how much time can you actually put in? And once you've determined that and you're honest with yourself, you, you might say two or three or four hours a day, but maybe you just don't have two or three or four hours a day, so you can put in 45 minutes. Now 45 minutes, not a bad amount of time. 30 minutes isn't a bad amount of time. More is always better in this regard, 
but time is time. So be realistic, set an achievable goal, set a goal for 45 minutes, and then if you play for an hour and a half, then awesome. But you at least make a, a deal with yourself, a contract with yourself that you will play 45 minutes a day no matter what, and you will work on these things for a certain amount of time within that 45 minutes on these days or, or every day or however you've structured it, and you make that goal with yourself. And that will really help you not only appropriately use your practice time and better your playing all around, but it will also help your motivations and it will help you see your progress. And then if you get more in in a day, then awesome. Be honest with how much time can you do? How much time can you put in and how much time will you put in? Really ask yourself that. Number five, I actually say this as well in the motivation video. I'm just gonna talk about it a little differently in this one, and that is to switch things up. I actually took this, funny enough, from competitive powerlifting, which really doesn't have anything to do with music, but it's muscle confusion. So this is from any, really any form of exercise, we'll talk a lot about this, but if you do the same thing for too long, like let's say you're doing bench press. If I do bench press, every Monday, which don't forget is International Chess Day. If I do bench press every single Monday and I do five sets of five or whatever I'm doing every single Monday, that will make me some progress for a while. But about four to eight weeks in, I, my body's gonna plateau. I'm gonna stop progressing. That muscle is going to stop growing. What I should do is I should switch the day and switch the exercise that I'm doing. Maybe I can still do bench press, but maybe I do decline or incline, but I should also change up the sets and the reps, the amount of weight, everything that I'm doing, I should change how I do it for another four to six weeks, and then I should switch it again. And if I switch the day, that's an added benefit because now your body is extra confused because it's used to doing a pushing style bench press workout on a Monday and you're doing like a pulling style back workout or you're doing a leg workout or something like that and that will help you grow in that way and it will keep your body guessing so that you continually elevate in your progress rather than elevate a little and then just plateau and maintain where you are. I applied this to music by doing the same thing with your hands. It very much applies to technique. It can apply to other things as well but it really really applies to your hands. So if you're trying to play faster, you're trying to play cleaner, you're trying to learn more chord voicings, you're trying to do things like that, don't practice the same thing every single day. Practice the same thing for a while. Okay, so don't do a 16th note picking sequence one day and then the next day or the next two or three or four days, you don't do it at all. Make sure you keep up on that every single day for a week, couple of weeks. It kind of depends on where your skill level is on how fast your hands will adapt and advance to a new thing. But take that item and do it for a week or a couple of weeks or a few weeks. And then when you start to hit a wall with it and you go, okay, I got to this speed on my 16th note sequence, change it up, do something else, do triplets, do purely legato playing, pick less, give your hand a break for even just a couple of days and then come back to it. If you're always doing big old bar chords or you're always doing power chords, well now go learn seventh chords, now go learn ninth chords, learn their inversions, learn the inversions for those bar chords, learn how to do those other things, learn songs that use these other things. Don't, if you're always, if you're always playing like Green Day tunes, you know, nothing against Green Day, but they're going to use a lot of power chord voicings and you're not going to get a huge chord vocabulary from playing their stuff. But maybe you go learn a jazz standard every once in a while and you really have to go outside of your comfort zone of the kind of alternative rock style or metal style or whatever that you're, you're doing. The bottom line here, switch up what you're doing. It helps keep you motivated, but it also helps keep your hands guessing. It helps them from plateauing. It helps you really continue to go in that upward upward slant of progress. And it can really help, and I know it's helped me a lot, and I still do it to this day. I also just get bored playing the same thing constantly, so I try to make sure to switch it up just for sanity, but it also really helps with my hands as well. All right, I hope this helped. If you have other ways that you like to use your practice time that you think are really beneficial, please let me know. I only listed five things here, so there are plenty of these tips to go around. So comment below so other people can see, but also feel free to shoot me a DM and I'll add them in another video. 
keep an eye out on my channel. I have the Sunday afternoon tea and shred videos that come out every single Sunday at 10 a.m. So keep an eye out for those. Please like, share, and subscribe. And if you are interested in private guitar lessons or private bass lessons, feel free to shoot me a DM as well or an email at PontiusGuitar at gmail.com. And I do all my lessons via Zoom. I'd love to help you with your goals. Or if you know somebody, give them my information as well. See you later.